Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Cinepresto. Today on the show, we have Eric Lopez. Hey, everybody. How's it going? He plays this guy in the back, Blue Beetle. When the Scarab landed on Jaime Rise's back, he turned into the superhero Blue Beetle. And now he's a part of the team. Glad to have you on board. Thank you so much, Eric, for uh, you know, having oh, man, time th to come Thanks do for this. having me, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> and just a little pretense, this is actually the second interview we're doing because uh, sound issues always, you know, technology never works out for Jaime Reyes, so we just want to reflect that. We want to make sure that we got that accurate point into the, <laughs> our show as well. So I'm glad to finally have you back <laughs> on. Thank you so much for your time again, as usual. <laughs> we planned oh, this time. Yeah. So. Hey, man, anytime. Seriously, any, anytime I can talk about Young Justice or Blue Beetle, I'm all for it. <laughs> <laughs> That's great to hear. So on that note, uh, why don't we go ahead and get started? Uh, can you tell me a little bit about what uh, really drew you to Blue Beetle? What did you like playing about him most? Uh, I think. Um, I think there's a. Sorry, can you hear that? There's like a helicopter going over right now. Sorry, I don't know if you can pick <laughs> that up. But, They're after the scare. Uh, <laughs> I, I think the thing that drove uh, that drew me to the to the role the most was the the fact that you know he was. He's a kid from the Southwest. He's, you know, a Hispanic kid, Latino kid. I, was just, I, I could really relate to him, you know, and, and the fact that, you know, DC's, you know, uh, DC and Marvel are both trying to, they're both trying to expand and, and be more, like, diverse their characters and to be able to play uh, one of the characters that DC's really trying to, sorry, I spit a little bit, <laughs> that DC's trying to push, it, it was just, it was really awesome, man, like, to, to even get that, that call. I mean, I, I didn't even know. Well, first off, I think I don't know if I, I told you the story last time before yeah, we had yeah. the difficulties about how I didn't know what I was going in for. Like when I read for Blue Beetle, uh, it was it, there was a code name. It was like uh, Cloud Ninja, and so so when uh, when I read for it, it was there was it was called Cloud Ninja. And when I booked it, I thought my agent didn't tell me that I was going in to read Blue Beetle. So so I went I went in and Greg Weissman comes up to me he's like you guys know what you're reading for and me and Cameron Bone were like nah we don't know because our agent didn't tell us she thought she's like oh you guys are you guys booked the storm Nin storm ninja job or whatever shadow ninja whatever it was and then we get in there and then Greg's like oh you're playing Blue Beetle this is Young Justice and I was like oh my god I was like freaking out because like I would I had auditioned for for Young Justice season one but I didn't get it and I was really bummed because anything DC. Or just anything superhero, I just want to be a part of it. So, so it was really cool, man. It was really, really cool to get the the job. Yeah, and uh, just in the background, you know, you've worked with uh, Greg before, right, on Spectacular Spider, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, yeah. It was the first job I worked with Greg on. I went. I've gone three for three uh, on projects with Greg. I was on uh, Spectacular Spider Man, and then uh, Young Justice, and then I worked on him with uh, uh, on the set, I think first season of uh, of Star Wars Rebels. So I. Three for three of Greg Weissman's projects, which is pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's always great to, you know, see material from him. He's a great writer when it comes to just, like, you know, being able to write for children's television. He really respects the audience, and I think that's what, you know, all his fans really love about him, you know. Yeah, he respects the audience more than anything. He, mm -hmm. he really goes to work for the audience. I mean, he he digs deep. Like, Molten Man. I played Molten Man oh, in yeah, Inspe yeah, mm -hmm. Spectacular Spider-Man. I'd never even heard of that guy until I played him. Yeah. <laughs> And he, it's just like, to him, it's sacred, you know, it's really a joy again to hear, you know, him talk about it every single time. Um, on that yeah. note, you know, when you got, first got the scripts, were you surprised with, you know, how much of a role Blue Beetle is actually going to play in, in uh, season two of Young Justice? Yeah, I was, I was greatly surprised and, and pleasantly surprised. Like, I, I, when I started reading the scripts and they, they, uh, they, it was all based around the reach. And, and I was like, wow, so the Scarab is is a is a, a drone or a soldier for the reach and i was like wow this whole thing this whole storyline revolves around blue beetle and the reach and i was just, oh man it it blew me away when i when i just when i realized just how how deep they were going with with with, with my character in the first season they were introducing him which is really cool mm -hmm. yeah and uh, uh they kind of also like tie that into the relationship with impulse too can you tell me a little bit about how um it was uh, in the booth when you had to work with, you know, some of the other voice actors as well. Oh, well, that's the, I think that's the coolest part of recording with with uh, with Greg. I, I don't know if, if Greg has a big say in it or if that's just the way it works out. I'm assuming Greg has a big say in it because Naturally. we we record on, we record ensemble every time uh, on, on any of Greg's projects. We're like in the booth together with everybody else. It's really cool. We get to play off each other and. It just I think it really helps the the soul of the of the episodes and like just the the quality of the reads 
they're not just you rattling off lines not knowing what the next person's going to say or or what the what the last person said you know even when you get read-ins it's not the same as when you have another actor next to you and and they're reading you in with their exact read that's going to be recorded as well you know what i mean it's awesome and working with jason as impulse man that was super fun i never worked with jason before i'd seen him on some stuff like on tv and movies I think he played Robin in the in the the sixties Batman and Robin uh, movie, and the, so it it was really cool to work with Jason. He was man, he was super cool. Like, he was fun. We still we would stand right next to each other too, so we could play off each other as imp- Impulse and Blue Beetle. Yeah, and I really loved the relationship that they had in 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 the show. And fans definitely love the relationship too. You know, you can uh, scroll through Young Justice blogs and see all the fan art of the two of them. Just you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, their friendship and everything definitely became like the heart of uh, season two, and it definitely felt yeah. organic too. You know, every hermano was so organic coming from you and everything. So it really spoke uh, to know, the fans. I tried know. to, I tried to make that, yeah, real organic and 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 realistic. You know, <laughs> <laughs> there's definitely like one way you could play where it's just you know comes out a little naturally, but you managed to pull it off, and that's pretty amazing. You know, yeah, it's mm-hmm. great, man. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. So, um, can you tell me a little bit, um, just uh. Oh, yeah. Um, we were talking a little bit last time about how, you know, uh, Blue Beetle's presence has definitely expanded. You know, he's shown up in Injustice 2 now. Now he's in yeah. uh, Young Justice, for, I mean, uh, sorry, Teen Titans versus Justice League. Can you tell me a little bit about how yeah. it was like, you know, just being a part of, um, you know, the star of Blue Beetle? We really got a lot of him after your portrayal and um, James Arnold Taylor's portrayal in uh, The Brave and the Bold, correct? Yeah. Uh, I, well, when I first heard... Uh, I was working with James on uh, Spectacular Spider-Man when he was Blue Beetle on Brave and the Bold, and he told me he was Blue Beetle, and I was, I gotta admit, I was a little jealous. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I wanna play Blue Beetle, because I think I read for that, and he got it, which was, I mean, he's freaking awesome, so it's kinda, you know, it would be, it'd be weird if I got it over him anyways. So, um, yeah, like, uh, to be, I mean, I think that I've had, I mean, I'm, I'm a little biased, but I think I've had the mo- the meatiest the meatiest uh, role that Blue Beetle's ever had. And, 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 and in that show, with, like I said, like with the artwork of, like with Phil Burras's artwork and, and Brandon Vietti and, and Greg Weissman's writing, it was just like a, it was like a dream team, you know, for, for, for those DC characters. And to be that Blue Beetle, that incarnation of Blue Beetle just means just so much. Because like it's, it's the one, I mean, I don't know if fans are just being nice, but they offer it up. So they say they're like, "This is the best." You're the Young Justice Blue Beetle is the best Blue Beetle out of all of them. They're like, and it, they're, it's my favorite. So yeah. I'm like, "Oh, thanks." It means a lot to hear that, you know. And and it it also it also makes me realize just how much I didn't think about it when I was you know recording it. If I really would have, I think if I would have thought about how much the fans were going to scrutinize the role and and really, uh, you know, it just how dedicated young justice fans were like if i would have if i would have realized just how hardcore they were before when i was in the booth i probably i probably would have like got real nervous but you know i i i got i mean once i'm in there i was in the zone a little bit but but if i would have thought about overthought it i would probably would have screwed up yeah i'm glad because you know to them you are the definitive blue beetle now and then when you go into conventions and everything you know you're still getting that yeah. same sort of recognition and praise for it yeah yeah and, and like i mean gears down the road it's our, it's been off the air for for three years i think and and the fans still talk about it they're still passionate about it still love it and i mean i don't know if there's anybody who wants a season three more than i do <laughs> i really do i would love to come back just to be working on another dc show yeah definitely but now that you know how big it is season three we're going to see yeah. a huge drop in quality of uh you know your voice acting for it because now you just know all the fans are there right just watching your yeah no, no 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 because then i'll be i'll be inspired you know i'll be a little bit more inspired to 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 put out a good performance great that's great to hear and then you know obviously how much do you want season three very badly you know and it's not just it's not just for the you know for the for the work you know what i mean like yeah you always want to work as an actor you always want to work but but like to just to be able to come back and after like the huge call that the fans have been putting out and the, you know, the, the tweeting and the, and the hashtags, you know, everything, it's it, all that to, to be able to give them something back to give, to give them something, something good, you know, another season, another season, a good season for, for all their loyalty would just feel really good, man. It really would because I mean, it really, it really touches you when you, when, 
when the fans like go to bat for you like that. Like, you know, they're sending emails and they're tweeting all the time and it's awesome. That's just so cool that, that the fans and to show the fans that they do have power, you know what I mean? That they do have power when they, when they tweet, when they let their voices be heard. And, and Greg always says when we're at conventions, like when in the season, you guys got to money talks, basically, you know, you got to buy the, the DVDs and binge watch on Netflix and, and buy whatever toys are still out there. If they're out there, you know what I mean? To show that, that you really want it to come back. And that's the truth. And, and I, I got a, I have a little feeling I've heard a lot of things, but it's all just rumor, but I got a feeling then if the way Netflix is turning out shows now, I, it would be stupid for them to not want to do another season, mm-hmm. especially because they know that the fans are there. They're built in already. They're ready to go. They're, they're, they're ready to watch. Definitely. Eric, I want to thank you so much again for being a part of this community and, you know, just really sharing ah. your voice. It really means a lot Thanks, to the man. fans and everybody else too. You know, I, I know I speak well, for all you the fans. Well, thank you too, man. Thank you for getting the word out, you know, doing this really cool podcast and, you know, and, and, and getting the word out like that. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> that means so much too. Thank you so much. It's, I'm hearing that from Blue Beetle. You know, I'm, I'm, my high school self is just screaming on the inside. So and that was only three years ago <laughs> too. So I'm still screaming now, right? Anyways, I'll probably scream right after I leave this interview. Well, I want to thank you guys, the viewers for watching. Um, Please make sure you watch uh, Young Justice on Netflix. Seasons one and two are still up there. Make sure you get through all of them uh, and just keep going. You know, leave it on the background as, our, as uh, we had Jason and um, Stephanie tell us before. Uh, finally, I did want to announce a contest today. I don't have the shirt, but the shirt is going up right now. You see a picture of it on the screen. Uh, you could actually have a chance to win the shirt if you actually follow these rules. There's only three steps. One, follow me at Cinepresto on Twitter. Two, Go ahead and post a video that you made about Young Justice fandom. Anything. It can be absolutely anything. But just, um, you know, getting the word out about Young Justice, make sure you post that on Twitter. Uh, use the hashtag, keep binging Young Justice. That's step three. And uh, feel free to tag anybody who's worked on the show. Um, the people who have actually worked on the show, like Eric, are very involved with this community. And we want to make sure that, you know, they see it too. They'll retweet you out. You know, they'll make sure that, you know, everyone is involved to try to uh, do, uh, provide the best effort that we can to get the shirt out. Um, I mean, the word out about the show. Um, <laughs> in December, uh, I'll be selecting a winner from uh, the numerous tweets, and I'll have a bunch of tweets in my inbox to look through, but I'll have a drawing for that uh, around December 31st. Hopefully, I'll be able to draw it out and grab, give one of you guys this awesome uh, signed shirt from Greg Weisman. So thank you guys so much. Um, make sure you follow Eric Lopez as well at Real Eric Lopez. Do you happen to have any other uh, social media sites that we need to follow as well? Uh, I'm on Facebook and and it's I'm listed as private just because you know because I like to weed out the the bots but mm-hmm. I pretty much accept everybody <laughs> um, and Twitter I think I'm I am Eric Lopez on Twitter I don't tweet very much the only thing I really tweet is the links to my Instagram because I do a lot of artwork yeah. but um yeah I mean I mean I tweet every once in a while it's just you know, I, I like out- I'm, I'm more of a I'm more of a visual person, so. <laughs> Definitely, yeah. You can check out pieces like this uh, fantastic piece right here. Eric actually drew this piece. It's going up on the screen right now. Uh, make sure you go ahead and check that out because he's got a lot of great pieces of art up there. And I, I understand that you're starting to try to get into selling some of them eventually at conventions as well? Yeah, I, I, if, I, if I really hit the convention circuit, which I really want to start doing, I'm gonna, I'm look, I want to look into, rather than you know charging people for pictures, I'd rather you know, sell a print than, than that, you know what I mean? I think that, that means more. And, you know, if, if I draw it, my, if I draw it myself, you know, it, it would be even more, I think to a fan than, than just a, oh, ooh, than just a picture. You know what I mean? <laughs> definitely. Definitely. You know, that's the next thing for season three reach prints are going to be how they take over the earth next time. Right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. Thank you again so much, Eric. I really appreciate oh, your thanks, time. Preston. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for keeping our memory alive. You know, no problem. Okay. I'll keep going on. Thanks so much.